All right, y'all, we're looking at five ways to fail a German car inspection. Uh, this sounds pretty interesting because I wonder what it entails. This has been suggested a couple times, uh, a couple of weeks ago by Barfus7 on Discord. So thank you for that. I'm finally getting to it. And uh, car inspections are some I've been able to avoid somehow. Uh, in my, it goes by county, it goes state to state in the U.S. And of course, within those states, it goes by counties. And I'm just far enough outside of Chicago where uh, there was no inspection. Also, when I lived in the state of New Mexico, uh, Doniana County there did not have inspections either. So it's pretty funny. But had I been in a bigger city like Albuquerque in New Mexico, they do have inspections. And uh, of course, if you are closer to Chicago here in Illinois, then, of course, they do have inspections as well. Though, here I am, funnily enough, uh, I just don't have to deal with these in my particular counties I've always lived in. So, looking to see what they go through in a German car inspection. I feel like it might be rigorous. That's just an assumption, though. And uh, I'm going to assume that these are probably relevant in most countries throughout Europe, I would guess. This comes to us from a channel called DTV. We'll be looking at just partial amount of this video you can check out the whole thing and of course check their channel with the link down below here we go two jeeps over here well since i'm a, a jeep fan okay. and that's why these two are sitting the way that they're sitting the right one is mine which i actually got through uh, german turf it took me a year and a half it is a u.s spec but once i was done with it i got it through term german turf the one on the left is uh is a, is a used jeep that we bought that we're of course going to resell but there's a few things so first glance, they're pretty different, right? The one on the left, if you see my mouse cursor, this is more what you would see in the U.S. Uh, I, I'm sure, as you know, Jeep Wranglers are like some of the most customized vehicles on earth, right? Everyone, I, very seldom do you see someone leave it factory, right? Everyone always just customizes the hell out of it. <laughs> and you usually see small bumpers. Um, we've had a Jeep like this. Uh, not anymore, but we used to. My wife did, and we had the small bumpers, and we had basically no fender flares. I mean, it looked cool, it looked crazy, but uh, we never had any problems here. It was it was street legal here. I'm guessing maybe it wouldn't be. A Germany? few modifications on it, which me as a Jeep fan I love, but the German Twiff doesn't like them too much. Ah, Let's start with the tires. That's what I thought. Because there's a lot of details about tires. Tires, in a lot of cases, are underestimated, especially here in Europe, because there's so many laws in regards to the tires. Uh, one example is if you look at the tires here, they're fully open. In the yeah. States, that's fine with that. I was going to say in the U.S., this is not a problem. You do have to have those tires covered on top by a thin fender flare, but you can get away with a lot, especially on Jeeps. I don't know why. They're like grandfathered in or something. <laughs> but yeah, you, you can have your tire poke out. That's usually never an issue in the U.S bumper there however when you bring a vehicle to Europe or specifically Germany you have to make sure that those front tires mm. are covered by the front bumper even in the front so the front bumper meaning this has to come out and cover the tire from the front angle <gasps> that's interesting that's uh that's different in comparison to that if you take a look at mine there the front tires are fully covered right so we're talking about this part here okay oh this I don't like that. <laughs> no, I totally understand that probably safety and regulation rules, this makes more sense. It's just Jeeps don't look good all covered up like this. <laughs> it's not a good look. Area here, so but that's one, not what it's about. In order for it to stay legal, this bumper has to cover the tire to at least 50%, mm. especially on these off-road vehicles. Always make sure that the front tires are covered by that bumper. That's the easiest way to put it. And another thing about tires, they're not allowed to stick out. So if you're looking at this Wrangler, you look alongside wow. of the vehicle, you see that those tires they're flush. are sticking out a bit. Oh, that they are. That can be a fail. Even even just that. even that do you oh my god it's barely sticking out that looks flush to me <laughs> i was gonna say a little tire poke uh, like i said it's no big deal here um wow a little bit pad i can't believe that would be illegal i feel like that's probably on the fence right maybe it depends on who's inspecting your your vehicle because th let's get real they're not sticking out that much it's almost flush that's this point right here the edge of this flare <sighs> I've seen inspectors literally take a ruler, go no down the kidding. flare, and then you see that it's actually sticking it out. It is sticking out. It's not sticking out much, but it is. So that wheel's got to be tucked in. I see. On this one, 
as Best long top. as this area here is covered, that's fine. But rear bumpers have never really been an issue. It's always it's the always front more the bumpers front. because you have the steering okay. up there. And then once you start driving, you'll also have all the water squirting to the front of the vehicle. Mm. In German terms, it's also a safety issue because it's a spinning part. And if a body part gets into there, it's a safety issue. Just to, to save some headache if your car goes to inspection. That's true. Um, there's a couple of things that you can check yourself. I have three examples here. I mean, if, if you look at this tire here, oh, this geez. is a perfect summer tire. You have a very nice tread depth yeah, right nice here. Yeah, nice and thick. Even surface. The, the, the using surface here is very even. On the other side here, I've got two very extreme tires, but they give you a good idea what your tire will look like when your vehicle needs an alignment. Mm. If the uh, the uh, wow, look at the uh, the tire. Let's see over here. Oh, heavily worn it is on one side. Looks like something was misaligned. Big and time. The Same with this one. Misaligned. Jeez. Then you'll have a picture like this, where the tire is worn uneven. Yeah, that's in bad. In some cases, you'll see like here, the edge is worn, is, is nearly bald. Whew. But the, uh, the left-hand side of the tire still looks, has some tread. Yeah, left side looks uh, What inspection right. <laughs> does is they always use the lowest tread profile on the tire to make up what the tread depth is. This here is pretty much... I have new tires on most of my cars except the green Saturn you may have seen in my um, manual transmission video I did recently. That one has kind of, that one's due for tires and probably would fail this. The lowest <laughs> of the tires. So they're not going to measure Just saying. the best tread, which in this case on the left hand side is three millimeters. They're going to measure here where we're looking at maybe one millimeter. So oh, in these man. cases, this car would need an alignment the same with this one if your tires look like this a very even surface your alignment is good in regards to tread depth and to limits if it's a winter tire the minimum recommendation when you should change your tires is 1.6 millimeters summer tires we're looking at three millimeters daytime running lights headlights uh, blinkers, tail lights, if they have any kind of aftermarket light bulbs that are LED, they are not allowed. They what? have to be aligned. Newer cars nowadays. LED lights. That's confusing. Um, don't a bunch of new modern cars have LED stock? I think our, our Subaru, our 2022 Subaru is LED light stock. Uh, unless it's one of those things where, oh, if it does come factory equipped with LEDs, then it's good, but you can't aftermarket install that's a bizarre one days they have the automatic alignment and, and the headlight adjustment yeah, yeah. you don't have to adjust those okay. now on this wrangler for example there is a headlight adjustment a manual one where you can adjust them but that can be measured and then you just adjust them and then they're good mm. to go can I just modify my vehicle after passing inspection that's a negative um of course you can do that. Yeah. However, if you get pulled over, the police can uh, put your vehicle in a non-op status, which means you are not driving that vehicle in the, until those changes have been Ooh. put back to the original state. We, wow. We were all okay. young. Yeah. I've done it back in the, in, you know, when I was a teenager, but if you want to stay legal, make sure that yeah. the parts on your car are legal. In the US, well, we're, all, we're all allowed. I can tell you that that's, um, that's going to make you think twice. Uh, you, even if you pass your inspection, then you say, oh, I'm going to modify a couple things now that I passed. I mean, yeah, if you get pulled over and they discover that stuff, I mean, that's pretty harsh, right? They're going to lock your car up. You're not going to be driving that until that's fixed. Um, yeah, it'd make you think twice for sure. So use the LED <laughs> light bulbs. Here in Germany, that is a fail inspection. All the headlights have to have the original light bulbs in there. You'll notice my Wrangler has LED headlights in it. It's an older vehicle. However, he's coming with the certification. So if you spend the extra money, you get you get light, uh, headlights with certification. Mm. You can put them on your vehicle. You get a document okay. that says that they're allowed to be put on this vehicle with a certain lumen of, of, of light. And then well, you just good. carry that, that paper with you at all times and you're good to go. I mean, that's good. So you still have options if you want an aftermarket light. It's just got to be a high quality certified light that meets standards. And that makes sense, right? You don't want some goofy 
cheap aftermarket light that is like weird colors or maybe blindingly light and uh, creates more problems than good. I guess that makes sense. Exhaust? For sure. There's, the law here says the exhaust is not allowed to be louder than 95 decibels. Okay, so it gives you a little wiggle room. 95 decibels is a little, I think, louder than most stock vehicles. Maybe. But a lot of aftermarket, you know, exhaust is going to be 105, 110 decibels, right? They're going to be up there. So no no uh, straight exhaust. <laughs> Any exhaust louder than that can get you fined, can get the vehicle put in op. What about some vehicles? There are some, I, I'm sure, exotic vehicles um, that that might be louder than that, though, right? Even maybe some trucks. What happens if it's stock? And it's louder than 95. I mean, that's possible, I feel like. Even if the vehicle was delivered to you like that. So if you, if you go to a buddy and you buy a Mustang with a sports exhaust and the police stops you and you tell the, the German police, oh, I bought it like that. No, that's not going to fly, buddy, because they're going <laughs> to find you. They're going to reinspect the vehicle. And unless you put it back in OE state, it's going to stay where it's at. We've had these situations too often. Because uh, we had a customer, he bought a Shelby from us, and he went to the inspection, he failed inspection. Then um, I made sure that we got the documentation, he went back to, to inspection, and everything was fine. At the end of the day, a lot of things here in Germany, um, as long as you have documentation that is legal, you're good to go. In his case, I actually got in contact with the German Ford dealership that just confirmed that the, uh, there's a, there was a certificate number on the exhaust that they uh, they got the documentation for, and then we just showed that to inspection. They were good with it. I've mm. had many of those lifted trucks. Mmm, yeah. lifts. I don't know how many. And out of all, all of those in the last seven years, I had one customer that actually knew what he was doing when he lifted his truck. Wow. You can lift your truck. As long as once you're done with it, it's still safe. I have seen right. lifted trucks with tension on the on the brake hoses, which Ooh, means you go off-roading, go good. through a, through a ditch Get or some up a hill, or whatever the case, rock crawling, and you snap your brake hose. Yeah. Well, you can imagine going off-roading and your brakes fail. That's not yeah. going to be fun. Those are the safety, the little safety things that. So if you want to get your truck lifted, have it done professionally. Right. And if it's done professionally, it'll pass inspection. Yeah. Well, that's cool to know that you can actually lift your truck. Obviously, it's got to be done right. And I think that should go for anywhere with inspections or not. I mean, lifting your truck changes the whole geometry of your whole suspension, the whole behavior of the vehicle. And that should always be done professionally and, and with some care in mind, because that is a day it's, it's really your safety as well as everyone else's. Uh, you don't want a truck that's wobbling all over the place and it's going to fall apart after being lifted, right? So, yeah, that one, um, I don't know exact numbers. Uh, that one, there's, believe it or not, even a limit here in the U.S. that you can't, it, of course, is state to state. Like in Illinois, you can't lift it too high because of the bumper height. They don't want the bumpers being too high. So then if you do happen to get in a wreck, you're not like literally running over a Toyota Camry or something like a monster truck because that's pretty dangerous, right? But I have to say, I see tons of ridiculously huge trucks that probably just based on eyesight aren't legal, but they, they don't seem to get, you know, enforced too much. So it's one of those things where if you get caught by the right guy or the right gal enforcing the rules, they might enforce it. But seems to be kind of easy to get away with, at least here in the States. But yeah, I, I as someone who has owned uh, lifted trucks before, you know, spend the money, get it done at a reputable place. You know, uh, don't don't skip out on left kits. If you're if you're gonna try and lift something really sketchy, just just don't do it. That would pass because we already checked underneath. All the uh, the brake hoses are fine. There's no tension on the brake hoses. Okay. There's no rubbing parts, um, and there's there's no knocking parts. Okay. Those are the things to look out for. Tinted windows. They used to be allowed here. They stopped allowing front, uh, the, the windows to be tinted in the front. In the Zero, front, okay. Unless it's Zero. Factory. The back can be tinted <gasps> all the way up to the B pillar, which is, so the front. They don't allow any. Okay, because that, they've gotten more strict on in certain states. Um, so I think in Illinois, they allow up to 20% tint. But below 20, if you're trying to get 10 or 5%, like some limo tint, it's not allowed, right? Of course, again, people do it. But I've seen people get caught as well. So that one is relevant here in the U.S., even in somewhere where they don't have inspections. 
if the police just see you with dark windows, they, they can pull you over for that here. Doors cannot be tinted. So in this case, I would say you can tint to right about here. All right, so that's a look into ways you can fail a German car inspection, which uh, I have a feeling maybe, uh, you know, my old truck and, of course, you know, maybe one of my cars might fail. So that's pretty funny. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think all in all, uh, it's, you know, not a question that things like this exist. It's, it exists everywhere, even here in the U.S. That, that's totally normal. That's not mind-blowing at all. Uh, I will say... I think for the most part, these this inspection, uh, these inspections in Germany sound pretty reasonable. I would lean towards my perspective here, uh, maybe a little strict, right? But I understand why. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying it seems pretty strict, and I know that most of it has to deal with you know safety in mind. And at the end of the day, being safe is the best option. So I totally get it. Um, I will say as the car guy side of things, so on the other shoulder, right, um, where you still want to be safe, but you want to be a car guy. And, and, you know, for some people, you know, their vehicle is, is an extension of themselves, right? It's like a huge part of their life. I feel like it'd be a little more of a pain, <laughs> right? Uh, that's one thing where, look, in these videos, I always learn about stuff that's really cool. And a lot of times, uh, unfortunately for me, I learn about stuff where, it might make sense in a lot of other countries and American way doesn't. I have to lean with the U.S. on this. I feel like being a car guy or a big truck guy or whatever uh, is easier in the U.S. for sure. I feel like you can get away with a lot more. You have more, you know, so-called freedom to customize your car, uh, you know, as long as it's not absolutely crazy. So I'm going to give the U.S. the win uh, here just for like, car guy stuff for customization if you want a car with crazy tires a uh, car that's you know crazy loud you could probably get away with it here but i have to say i've seen a couple clips here and there of like um i don't know like just i guess car meets or, or car shows and i'm pretty sure i've seen a lot of custom cars in germany through some clips that looked pretty crazy like lowered and and customized and with loud exhaust so I don't know, like how they get away with that, right? It must be just people are able to <laughs> risk it. And then when it comes to inspection time, maybe they, they get it, you know, all bundled up to where it looks good. And then they go back to crazy customization when it's not inspection time. Maybe that's how it works if you guys want to weigh in on that. Uh, one thing we didn't find out is when do they do these inspections? Is it like every year or maybe biannually? Uh, you have to let me know on that. But I thought this was pretty interesting, especially as someone who doesn't even have to deal with these at all. I hope you enjoyed this one. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Hope to see you in the next one. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. Until next time, y'all, stay safe out there. I'll catch you later.